All right, welcome back. In the last video, we showed how you can take what was given to you in the drone kit and assemble it into your very own drone. Uh, and that gets a lot of the mechanical setup configured. A few of the wiring harnesses are tricky and you can set those up. But now we're gonna work towards actually getting the motors to spin. And there's a few extra steps that we need to do to set this up, make sure everything's ready to go. All right, so let's talk about our drone and what was given in that drone kit in a little bit more depth. So we've clearly got these four motors, um, but what I will highlight is each of the motors has this little tri-carat um, indicator of spin direction. Now, the way the motors work, uh, if you wire it in certain directions, you can get the motors to spin either direction, but the threading on top uh, is designed to self-tighten the propellers when spun in a specific direction, okay? Uh, if you spin the other direction, if the propeller gets at all loose, it might uh, shoot it off, okay? So, so we try to make sure that the propellers are always going to be spinning the direction that they indicate, okay? Now, you will have gotten two clockwise and two counterclockwise. So this one's designed to spin counterclockwise. Uh, other ones are designed to spin clockwise. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the clockwise motors are in the correct location and the counterclockwise ones are in the correct location. Then we next need to actually send a signal to those motors and make sure that they spin clockwise and counterclockwise respectively. So it does me no good if this guy is in the right location, if he's spinning the wrong direction. That's all I need, okay? So here we go. Um, the first thing that we should do so we should make sure that all of our wiring uh, traces through correctly, okay? So starting at the motors, let's look at our wiring. We have four wires coming out of our motor connected to, wow, let me try that again. We have three wires coming out of our motor connected to three wires that go into an electronic speed controller. Now coming out of that electronic speed controller, we have uh, power wires, a red and a black, and we have this um, little signal wire. Let me see if I can grab it right here. Okay, this is our, our tri package. It's got the black, red, and white. Okay, this is our signal. Uh, and then this is actually just power for, for it. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to make sure that everything on these is wired correctly. Now, the first step is a little bit challenging because we've got three unmarked wires going to three other unmarked wires. Uh, and so it might be a little unclear which ones go where. For now, let's just plug them in arbitrarily. Um, it turns out that the way you plug these in uh, affects the polarity of the motor. And so if you plug it in in one configuration, say one, two, three, then from there, it maybe it spins clockwise. But if you plug it in uh, two, one, three, it might spin the other direction. Okay, so it's all about the polarity. We will have to actually turn the motors on before we know, are these spinning the direct, correct direction, all right? Uh, the next thing is our power. Power needs to be routed down to the power distribution board on the bottom. That one should be relatively trivial and should have already been covered in the last video. The last one is our signal source, okay? So our signal comes in and is routed over to this breakout where we have eight channels marked on here um, and each has their own three pin connectors, okay? Now we have a quad rotor and there's only four things that we are going to be sending signal to. So that means we only need the first four channels and the channels are grouped uh, left to right in this case. So over here is channel one, two, three, four, all the way over to eight on the far right, okay? The only thing that's important here is make sure that it's your black wire that is on the top face, okay? That's what's important. Uh, it should go white at the bottom, red in the middle, black on top, okay? As long as you have it wired that way, um, we should be good. Now, the next piece of this is which channel, or sorry, let me try this, which motor should be channel one and which motor should be channel two, three, four. For that, we need to go into the documentation of the PixHawk and see what it is actually expecting. So let's take a look at the PixHawk. Okay, 
Now, let me actually show you where I got to. Um, I just searched PX4 airframe. So the PX4 is the Pixhawk 4 that we are flying. And this is the uh, airframes are the different types of controllers that they have built. So if we just click that very first link, this will bring you to a page of all the possible controllers that are pre-built on the Pixhawk. And all you need to do is select one of them. So as we scroll down, we will eventually get to a host of multi-rotors and we're looking for the quad rotor that matches our design. And now there are a couple of quad rotors, but the one we're looking for is right here. Quad rotor X. Quad rotor X, um, starting off in the top left, it goes three, one, four, two. Okay, now that might sound a little arbitrary, but let's try and make sense and walk through exactly what we're seeing. Notice that uh, propeller one and two are both spinning counterclockwise and propellers three and four are both spinning clockwise. Now, the easy way to remember that is if you look at these arrows, notice that all the arrows on the inside are pointing towards the center of the vehicle, okay? So we are trying to, when all the motors are spinning at the same RPMs, we're trying to make sure that all the torques that are generated are canceling each other out. That's what this will accomplish. Okay, and then um, we're pairing our two clockwise, sorry, two counterclockwise and two clockwise motors together. That's all it is. So switching back over to our motor to try and match that out, this one over here, this is going to be motor one. So we need to find his channel cable, which comes right through the middle of mine. Uh, and we need to make sure that it is this first one right here. Uh, this one will be four. Two is right here. We need to make sure that two, and this one we can do a better job of tracing. He comes through here, comes up and over, and sure enough, he is plugged in to the second channel with black up. Um, three is here, he needs to go to the third slot, and four is here. Okay, so that's what we have working with us. Um, so everything is wired correctly. Now, an important detail is my power is currently unplugged. That's going to be important here in a minute. Uh, as we are going to start sending commands and powering up our Pixhawk, we do not want our motors to be spinning uh, if we are not paying attention or send a, an errant command, okay? So let's go back to the Pixhawk documentation. And we know this is the quad rotor that we want to send, but we need to tell that to the Pixhawk. Uh, the way that you would do that is right up here, Q ground control is a way of interfacing with your Pixhawk through a uh, GUI interface. So graphical user interface. So let's click Q ground control. And there it is, an intuitive and powerful ground control station for the MavLink protocol, okay? MavLink, you might tuck that one away. We're gonna be using MavRoss to interface our Jets and Nano with our Pixhawk, okay? Um, this is just a protocol. Uh, to send information back and forth. And what you want to do is you want to follow the download button. And depending on whether you're Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu, uh, you can download the appropriate one. The download's relatively fast and relatively straightforward. So I'm not going to cover it here. I've actually already got it uh, installed on my computer. So I will pull that up. All right, when you pull up your own Q ground control. This is what you should see. Something like this, you might have a map here, uh, depending on what page you're on. Okay? But in red letters up at the top, it should be clear that you are not connected to your Pixhawk. Okay. From here, let's talk about connecting to your Pixhawk. So, first thing that we'll note, let's turn this 90 degrees so we can see on the inside. And you can see my Pixhawk right in there. And I've got a black wire coming out that was not part of the drone kit. This is uh, just a micro USB to USB. Okay. And so if I pull that out, here it is. And I'm just going to plug this into my computer and connect to Q ground control. Okay, so we are connected. It'll take a couple of seconds for it to fully connect. Manual flight mode. And there you have it. Okay, so we are now able to interact with our uh, Pixhawk. But in this situation, 
I've already built my Pixhawk. Uh, I've come into all of these different settings. Um, there are dozens of parameters. Uh, sorry, when I say dozens, what I really mean is hundreds, hundreds of parameters you can set. Um, and here in red, just to highlight them, these are ones that I have custom changed to fit the hardware and the problem that we're going to be doing. Okay. Now, for you, when you come in and you are on your summary, you're going to have a lot of red dots uh, instead of green dots. And a number of these channels are going to be uh, highlighted red as well. Okay. So let me, let me join where you guys are. And I will come into parameters and then top right corner is tools. And I'm going to reset my Pixhawk back to default. So that, and now this should be much more familiar. Uh, the airframe is unselected, the sensors are uncalibrated, and the radio is unset. All of these things are true. Uh, and if we go back to our, our summary, you can see all the red dots that I, I discussed. Now, what I have done for you guys is I have taken all the settings that my team has designed and selected, and I have output them as a, uh, a file that you can just input into your Q ground control so you can have a carbon copy of what I have. So if we do this, let's pull up the battle drones repo. And there's a new project here, Pixhawk parameters. It's going to be a relatively trivial um, Git repository. I don't expect to make any more commits other than the first commit, which is to push up this file, battle drones default dot params. And from here, you can just go ahead and download this, um, this script, right? And you can see here are all the parameters that I have set, hundreds and hundreds of parameters. Uh, a lot of these are default, but a good number of them are not, okay? I'm not interested in going into a full dive on these, but I'm sure there's lots of training videos that are out there that can walk you through how to use Q ground control, okay? Once you have that downloaded, Let's come back to our Q ground control. We'll go to parameters, tools, load from file. Now, all you need to do is make sure that you have saved your Battle Drones default parameters in a location that you can access, whether that's your, your downloads or a document or on your desktop, that's your preference. Uh, what I've done is Q ground control, when I installed it, made a, a, a repository or a file inside uh, documents, and there's a structure for parameters already there. So uh, I just am going to click on that. Oh. And we're going to load that in. All right. Once we've done that, uh, you can see a number of these parameters that we have selected have uh, require a reboot. So the next step that we need to do is go back to this tools button, reboot vehicle, and it'll take a couple of seconds to reboot, but then we should be good to go. Oh, I'm sitting here waiting, uh, but it was asking for my input. Sorry about that. Manual flight mode. And there it goes. All right. So we rebooted it by after importing all of those parameters. And now we get all green lights. Um, so this is great. This is helpful. The only thing that you may not have a green light on are your sensors. OK, I'm not going to touch the sensors right now. Um, I'm sure you can figure it out if you click on in on it. The instructions are very um, self-explanatory, but I will make another video in uh, separately just to focus on calibrating your sensors and how you're supposed to do that, okay? Uh, for now, this is all that we need. All right, so we are connected to our drone. We have put all of the parameters in that we need. The next thing that we need to do is make sure that our motors are all spinning the correct direction. So for this, we are going to... Um, Eventually, not quite yet, but eventually we are going to plug in our battery, uh, which I have here. I have recorded this video a few times, and so the battery is getting low. So if you hear it, yell at me. Um, make sure that you don't use a low battery, but for now, we don't need much juice just to make sure that's in the right direction. Um, 
And with this, let's dive right in to how to send a command to a specific motor through your Maplink connection. So back over here, we need to come up here to this icon. It looks like a piece of paper with magnifying glass. And once we clicked on that, this third tab on the left side is the Maplink console. Now, when you click on that, this works just like a shell. Um, it's like a command line interface, and we can provide commands to our PixHawk straight from our computer. So the command that we need to do is actually first to calibrate our max and min um, pulse width modulus is what it's referred to on our electronic speed controllers. All right, so if you can see my camera, it's this guy. Um, now to do that, there, there are a couple ways to do it and Q ground control does provide a way to do this automatically, but it's good to know that you can command your controllers and this is very helpful for debugging. So I'm gonna show you how to do it from the command line. Um, the first thing that we'll say is if we type in pulse width modulus space help. All right, this is gonna walk us through the various commands that we can use associated with the PWM um, operator. So PWM, and then we can use the arm command, the disarm command, uh, the disarmed command, which is different than disarming. This is actually setting values. Uh, and then we've got our max ends. And down here, test is the important one. Set output to a specific value until Q or C or control C is pressed. Okay, so this is where we can actually command a very specific motor to operate at a uh, pulse width modulus that we dictate. Okay, now if we are in any of these test disarmed, uh, we do need to provide a dash P and a value. This will be the pulse width modulus value. Uh, for example, 1100 is a good option. Um, we are going to go in and set the default values, uh, the max and min values. So let's do that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to pulse width modulus test dash A. Now the dash A command, if you kind of follow us up here, is for all the channels. So we have the four channels for the four motors. This is going to hit all of those. So we say dash A, and then we need to provide a pulse width modulus value. And in this case, we're going to do pulse width modulus of 2000. Now notice, I'm going to send this command and my battery is not plugged in yet. Okay, this is important. When your electronic speed controllers first get power and they've already received a pulse width modulus, they're going to automatically enter into calibration mode. Okay, and the pulse width modulus that you sum submit is going to get set to the max. So let's go ahead and do that. We send that and you can see that it's operating. Um, we can press control C or C to abort. Now that that's been commanded, let's plug it in. All right, so every time you power that in, you'll hear part of that song, but some of that high pitch song was actually indicating that it has gone into calibration mode. So now I'm going to end my value with a C command. So this will end that pulse width modules command that I sent, but immediately in the same line, I'm going to give it a new command all channels, and I'm going to set a dash P of a thousand. As I, as it sees a command in line with a terminate, it is going to set that as the minimum. And to confirm that that works, it will sing a little tune. All right, so that worked. That's all been done and all of our motors have been calibrated. Sorry, our electronic speed controllers have been calibrated. So we're good to go there. Now we can come in and we can run a very specific channel test. Okay, So I'm going to type in to the same line, pulse width modulus, PWM, test 
the only difference from the ones I've done previously is instead of dash A, I'm going to select a specific channel. So I'm going to do pulse width modulus test dash C, and let's do channel four, which should be this motor right here. Uh, and I'm going to set that to a very low P value. Let's do 1080 and run. And there was a small typo. There we go. Okay, so there we go. I have placed this one in and you can see that he is spinning. All right, now, uh, very cautiously, it's easy enough for me to feel which way he's spinning by lightly, lightly touching it. I don't want to get any long hairs, sleeves, anything that can get caught in something spinning. Those are real risks. So please be safe while you do this. Um, but all I need to do is be able to tell is he spinning counterclockwise or clockwise. Uh, and then once I do that, I can send the C and end that. And this guy, if you could tell, was spinning in the clockwise direction. And since he's motor number four, and our documentation says he's supposed to spin clockwise, this guy's good. Okay, now we can cycle around and do that for all of them. But for now, let's just go back and do the same test for motor two. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did switch motor two around. And so when I plug him in, I can feel this guy is spinning clockwise. He's supposed to spin counterclockwise. So I'm going to terminate that. And uh, let me just try to see if I can drop my pulse width modulus just a little bit more. Let's do 78. All right. 10, 76. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm just trying a few different values to see if they'll come through clearer on the video, but I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with that. But the point is, this guy is supposed to spin counterclockwise. He's currently spinning clockwise. So all we need to do is pick any two of these wires and switch them around. There we go. And now when I send my command, ah, now it's spinning counterclockwise. Okay, so there we go. It's just that easy to get everything operating on your drone. Um, now there's a few more settings that you can play with and tune. You can set it to various modes and just make sure that the drone reacts without propellers. You can pick up your drone put it in a stabilization mode and see if your propellers are all kind of trying to fight if you add a little bit of tilt to your drone or add a little bit, uh, sorry, I guess the technical word would be pitch or roll. Add a little bit of those and make sure that, that everything is good. But for now, um, I feel pretty confident letting you guys go and I will follow up in a separate video about how to do your calibration for your drone.